Uh, in the meantime, I can remind you to switch off your mic while joining. Okay, so once again, uh, a very good day from Milan. I'm uh, Filippo Gavazzini, uh, the head of the Milan Urban Food Policy Back Secretariat, and uh, I'm delighted to moderate this uh, webinar series that uh, <clears throat> we are co-organizing with the ASEAN Health Sector through the kind facilitation of the Health Division of the ASEAN Secretariat. We are particularly happy today because, um, as you as you know, it's the World Food Day, and we thought uh, it would be a good thing to celebrate uh, uh, this World Food Day with this webinar dedicated on. Uh, uh, food strategy, which is, uh, in our opinion, let's say the the, the most important element to develop uh, um, uh, food policy that may might embrace different uh, uh, level of government that uh, and that are uh, surely more more effective. So today, actually, uh, we will uh, we will know from. Um, Colleagues, uh, I will I will now present them uh, to understand how a city can develop uh, its um, uh, food strategy with uh, a multi-level uh, uh, governance approach. And uh, for this, we will have uh, three uh, prominent speakers. The first one is um, uh, Cecilia Marocchino, who is the Urban Food Agenda Coordinator at the Food System and Food Safety Division at uh, in uh, in FAO, and we with FAO actually we are uh, uh, working together uh, in, in in different parts of the world in different region. Uh, uh, well, under many issue, but uh, also in particular on the, under this uh, specific topic, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> the um, multi-level governance approach while. Uh, uh, developing a uh, food strategy. Then we um, will move uh, uh, to the presentation, so the experience of the city of Milan uh, with the presentation of Andrea Magarini, who is the director of the uh, food system, the, 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 um, the food policy division in, uh, in Milan. And he will present the, um, the, the food strategy of Milan developed in 2000 and, uh, um, uh, and 15. And finally, uh, we are happy to, to give the floor uh, to Mr. Pom from uh, Vicky Cert, that is uh, the advisor uh, to the government of, 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 of Bangkok on environmental affairs. And we have been working uh, in the last two years under the IURC program, which is a, Europe a European program, to also to support them in, in developing their, their first uh, strategy. So I will. Uh, uh, now give uh, just a, a very short introduction on uh, uh, what is, let's say, um, what is recommended under the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact. Um, let me just share the screen. Mm. Okay. Okay, so for those who are not present, the last uh, in the introductory webinar, the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact is a global commitment of mayor that has been signed uh, on um, uh, 2015 after the Expo, the Universal Exposition here in Milan, and is a um, tangible platform for showcasing best practices under uh, food system transformation. The PAC provides 37 recommended actions that are clustered in this uh, six category. And then each signatory cities, now we have 270 um, mayors that signed the pact, uh, can decide uh, which uh, of the 37 recommended action can choose depending on the political priority 
or the local uh, contest. So you see uh, the holistic approach that we can try to provide because these 37 recommended actions are clustered in the categories that you can see in the pack. So from governance to sustainable diets, from social and economic equity to food, food production, food supply, and then food waste. But today we would like to focus um, our attention on governance. We have three main tools in the Milan Pack. The first one are the 37 recommended action, which I just mentioned. And uh, then uh, we have the 44 indicators that we have developed together with uh, with FAO and with the Office of, uh, of Cecilia, with the support of, uh, of RUAF. And then th uh, more than 300 and, um, and, and, uh, yeah, 370 best practices coming from uh, the Milan Pact Awards that uh, can give you, let's say, uh, uh, good examples from all around the world. What about governance? So these are the six uh, recommended action of the Milan Pact for the governance uh, um, category. I would like to focus mainly uh, on the first one, which is uh, facilitate collaboration across city agencies and departments and try to seek alignment of policies and programs that have an impact on the food system across multiple sectors in the administration, but also at the different level of governance, so county, regional, and also state, and also supranational in the case, for example, in the, of the, um, in Europe, for example, we have also uh, le uh, legislation that we, um, that we need to take into, into consideration at a European level. Then, <clears throat> Number three, number two, we will we will focus on uh, on uh, on the second one uh, on the next webinar. It's uh, connected to the multi-stakeholder participation that we have uh, identified, map and and evaluate local initiative. Um, so uh, try to uh, identify, create an inventory of the activities that are conducted in your city that may have, uh, let's say, may, mm, might be conducted by uh, local stakeholder, national or, or, or uh, regional stakeholders. And about the inventory, I think that we will uh, know more in the how to do it. Uh, we will know more in the last uh, presentation from, um, from Bangkok. And then number four also, which is uh, which is important, so the allocation of appropriate resources uh, within the city administration uh, to regulate food-related policy. At the same time, these resources might come from uh, the municipal budget, but also uh, there might be opportunity windows to um, take these resources uh, from the different level of government, uh, maybe on some specific uh, on some specific policies. And um, let me now move to the to the indicators. So we have presence of an active municipal and inter interdepartmental government body uh, on um, that might <clears throat> advise on decision of food policies. And we will we will we will know more from uh, the experience of Milan on this. And then. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the presence of a municipal urban food policy. So what already exists uh, in uh, in your cities and the idea here is to create a unique plan that uh, gather together the different policies that might be undertaken, for example, by the different department of the city or the different level of governance. And um, if you want to know more on the on the practices on uh, on governance, you can download the Milan Pacta Awards uh, report, and you can um, uh, you have the the QR code here, and you will have many insights from different cities uh, in uh, in governance. We have a winning cities in. Um, in North and Central America, plus a special mention, one from South America and one from Europe on governance. Uh, as you can see from, from this report, as you can see in this chart, uh, the majority of the practices presented from uh, on, on governance come from, from Europe. And there is, let's say, in a way, a lack of um, uh, food strategy presented to the Milan Pact Awards coming from Asia Pacific. And that's why we wanted to focus together with, uh, with FAO, so with, uh, with Cecilia, on spurring the cities in Asia Pacific uh, to adopt uh, 
uh, their 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 first uh, full strategy that, they, that should be in a way comprehensive of all the activity undertaken on the food system at a municipal level. And also this is very consistent with uh, the SDG number 17 partnership for 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 the goals. OK, so I will uh, now. And my introduction and uh, immediately move. Uh, the. And give the floor to Cecilia Marocchino, which I just uh, presented before. Uh, because she will has uh, she will have very good uh, examples and approach to share on the developing a food strategy, uh, an urban food strategy with uh, a multi level uh, with the, uh, sorry yeah with a multi level approach. So Cecilia, without further ado, the floor is yours. We are going to share now the presentation for you. Thank you, Filippo. Thank you, and good morning. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. So first of all, on behalf of FAO, I really thank the, the Secretariat of the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact and uh, also the, the Association of Studies as a Nation, ASEAN, for this invitation to, to this webinar on this, uh, I have to say, an important focus, which is at the core of the urban food system agenda, the development of the food strategy with uh, a multi-stakeholder approach, with a multi-level governance approach. Let me just give you um, a small uh, intro. You can, so please, you can go ahead with the slide. With the first slide. Uh, I don't know if you can project the slide, Filippo, so I don't have the possibility with this laptop. So the second, OK. So just a, a quick step back to mention how important is this agenda in the context of the United Nations. Because as you all know, for the United Nations, the main counterpart are member states, are national government. But, but as FAO and with, uh, with many partners, including other UN agencies, we are increasingly giving importance and recognize the role of cities and local government. And I want to quickly mention that in 2021, the United Nations Food System Summit was a really turning point in recognizing the role of local government as a key actor in the agenda of food system. An alliance was also created uh, during the summit, so what we call uh, the Global Urban Food System Coalition, the logo that you see on the on the um, on on the on the on the right. Uh, in yellow, in uh, orange, sorry. And it was created for uh, strengthening collaboration among different partners around this topic or of urban food system. And we are in close col collaborating also with Milan Urban Food Policy Pact uh, in this coalition. After two years, in July 2023, there was the UN Food System Summit stock taking moment last July to review the progress of commitment from national government. And again, in this context, the voice of the cities, the voice of local government have been raised, recognizing that they have an important role in food system transformation. And then in June 2023, for the first time in the history of the United Nations, so one of the flagship uh, publication, the state of food insecurity in the world, is was focusing on food insecurity and urbanization. And again, in the context of this flagship uh, publication, so the role of cities and subnational government have been has been highlighted. So as a key player that can make a real change in terms of achieving the, 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 the 2030 agenda and the food system transformation. So indeed, 
So local government, which are government of proximity, they are in close contact with urban population. It is recognized that as United Nations, we cannot avoid to work with the local government. They are the one well placed to identify where change are most needed in order to improve food security and nutrition, but in connection with other agenda like health or, uh, or, or sustainable development in general. So whether it is explicitly recognized or not in a mandate of a municipality, municipalities already taking care of food system with urban agriculture, with food waste, with market. And so we cannot, we cannot work just with the national government if we want to achieve the SDG 2 of improving food security and nutrition. Uh, so we need to work with the local government. This is, is, is becoming increasingly important in the agenda of the United Nations. Next, please. So what do we do in practice? So we support cities with the partners on solving their problems because food strategy is not another layer, another tool is a way to solve problems connected to the to the food system transformation. It could be. Yes. It could be on urban. Uh, so what FAO is doing uh, with the partners is uh, supporting uh, on this agenda using uh, different entry point. Well, well, urban agriculture, food waste, market, community kitchen uh, to improve uh, access to healthy food. So we can uh, support uh, on the school meal, uh, integrating fruit and vegetables in the in the menu of the, 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 the school. But what is important is creating connection between the various food system component. It's not just about market, it's not just about urban agriculture, but food strategy is about the connection among the different component of the food system, but also between the food system and other agenda, like health, like transportation, like environmental sustainability like resilience to shock and extreme event like we saw during the COVID-19. So connection. Connection is at the center of the approach, of the FAO approach, but of the, the approach that we are developing with all the partner. And this is what we call the systemic approach. The systemic approach is not linear, so it's not just connection, but is also understanding trade-off. So what are what 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 action can be can create or what what kind of of effect can have on other agenda? An action on food security, which effect has on the environmental agenda? So this is why in the food system strategy, we put all the elements together, urban agriculture, market, governance, and governance is at the center of the food strategy. And so that is why in the approach that FAO is, do, is using, we have, so you can go ahead with the, with the slides, in the FAO, in the, the, at the center, you can see uh, un, uh, in, in, in red, so the multi-stakeholder and multi-level governance mechanism and the food strategy and food policy are at the center of your approach. We can start from everywhere, food waste, urban agriculture, uh, food environment, school canteen, but then at the center, we have always the consultation with multiple stakeholders, and we have the development of this holistic food strategy that create connection among the different components. 
And the key point, the key point is to answer to the question, which kind of problem we want to solve with the implementation of the strategy? <coughs> should be at the table. Who are the relevant stakeholders and how we can be inclusive, how we can make sure that no one is left behind. So to all to all to do all these, we need all the key player and the national and local government should be together at the same table. And this is a real challenge. So next next slide, please. And I would like to reference to one of the food strategy that was launched in 2023 in Dhaka in Bangladesh. So the, the Dhaka Food Agenda, which was developed together with the four cities corporation in Dhaka. So because Dhaka is um, as include four cities corporation, but also in collaboration with the Minister of Local Authority, Rural Development and Cooperatives. And this gave me the opportunity to introduce this topic of multi-level governance, which is extremely important not to add again another layer of complication of the work that municipalities are already doing. So it's really to try to unlock resources, to try to unlock power and to try to collaborate for making sure that what we develop, food strategy, food policy, becomes a tool to be implemented, becomes a reality, could make a real change in the context where you work. So the topic of bridging the gap between national and local government is the important agenda we want to focus, and it is a big challenge we have to recognize, is not that easy, but how to do, what is the process? So we don't have the receipt, we, uh, we have context specific uh, 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 problem to be solved, and uh, different cities start in different way. In the case of DACA, the process started uh, with uh, many training, so rising awareness at the local at the local level, training on nutrition uh, and uh, urban gardening in slum area, uh, is training on COVID-19 uh, to the market vendors, training on, um, on uh, food safety uh, and food hygiene to hotel, restaurant, cooks, uh, butchers, street food vendors. Then the establishment of a food market, uh, farmer's market for providing fresh local and organic food. So these were just the entry point, mainly on food safety, mainly on market, on urban agriculture. And then after a long process of, of consultation, where we had uh, at the table different actors from municipality, from national government, not only the Ministry of Local Government, but also other ministries, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Environment, then all the Department of City Corporation, so the difficulties was to find the compromise, the commonality. And then after long consultation and facilitation, so the, and managing all the different interests of the various actors, they have developed and launched the, the urban food strategy in collaboration with the national government. And the challenge is that this document should not remain a vision. They should make change. And to make change means unlocking the resources. So next, please. <clears throat> and so to unlock resources is again an imp the role of national government in some context is extremely important, particularly when we talk about small and intermediary cities. So this means that also national policy framework should be development with the strong involvement of subnational authority and, and non-state actor in order to represent the diversity of territories and food system perspective in a country. 
So this also means in many contexts where the decentralization is not so strong, that allocation of specific budget line for food system intervention at local level are fundamental. This also means that such, uh, su such budget may also foresee fund to sustain this multi-level, multi-stakeholder coordination structure that can be established at the local level. And as FAO, because this is a, an, a new topic, is not that easy. So that's why together with the partners, we are collaborating for developing a guideline on uh, multi-level food system governance together with recall to the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact and other, and, other, um, and, other mem and other members of the Urban Food System Coalition. So to, to, to understand what are the good practices, how we can get inspired from others, because the peer-to-peer -peer learning is an important component that we can, uh, we, we, uh, of, the, of this agenda of uh, the the food system transformation, but of the food strategy, food policy and multi-level governance. So that's why uh, we are collaborating uh, for developing this, uh, what we call a guidance node and framework for action on multi-level governance. So to conclude, so national government can create this enabling environment for local government action. And it's important they create the space for dialogue, for co-designing food system policy framework and providing resources to implement this framework and innovate on the ground. And these frameworks can be translated in local policy is, uh, that adapted to the context of the territory can be uh, can provide can can really be uh, create that enabling environment for starting the change on food system and i will stop here thank you thank you thank you so much cecilia um, remind that Cecilia is um, Urban F uh, Food Agenda Coordinator at uh, at FAO. Thank you for providing us uh, an overview on how 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 is a food strategy so important uh, for um, urban <clears throat> well and local institution to be to be developed. And uh, of course, food strategy is about connection. Is about conne connection within uh, the <clears throat> local administration just to I mean with a food strategy uh, everything let's say connected to food is under control because you um, you know uh, according to the strategy, what the education department, the health department, uh, the um, agriculture department is doing uh, in synergy and in harmony with the different level uh, of, um, of of governance uh, uh, in your region and in your in your state. So uh, let's uh, now move uh, uh, to the presentation of the first city. And, uh, and the experience of the news of uh, of the first city, which is the city of Milan, with Andrea Magarini, who is the director of the food policy department. Uh, he has a very interesting uh, um, food strategy to share. It's quite eight years uh, long from the let's say from the adoption. And without further ado, I will leave the floor to Andrea. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Filippo. Happy World Food Day to all of you, and uh, it's a pleasure to come back to all of our friends uh, from uh, Asia Pacific. So, 61 participants uh, is a very good result. So, let's start uh, our food policy, our food strategy, and then uh, some uh, in depth uh, uh, presentation of uh, one of our main drivers to transform our local food system that is connected also to the topic that some of you touch in every daily activities, so health and promotion of health regarding food. Uh, so we start, uh, as Filippo mentioned, in 2015 by studying our local food system. And so by defining uh, a, a kind of comprehensive uh, 
um, reports, study on our local food system, we try to define all the interconnection uh, that are at the base of the relation of establishing uh, um, an, urban, uh, an urban food system approach. As uh, Cecilia mentioned, connections is the key uh, to define uh, a local food policy. And here in this infographic, you can see the results uh, of our uh, study. So um, starting from production, transformation, logistics, uh, distribution, consumption and waste, we try to understand the entire uh, spectrum, the entire arena of uh, this new field of uh, a political uh, efforts at local level. And so we start uh, to connect uh, projects, initiatives, uh, actions, uh, food related public service that was already active at that time. And how we do this? We do through interview. So we start uh, doing an inventory as uh, Filippo mentioned, also as one of the recommended action of uh, Milan Urban Food Policy Pact on governance. So starting from an inventory, this is uh, the images of the uh, inventory that we have done in Milan by interview all the different deputy mayors and all the different directors of the city that have some relation with food. And so we work, uh, we, we interview the deputy mayor from agriculture, the deputy mayor for school canteen, the deputy mayor of waste, and try to see what are uh, what are they doing on food system and also try to interconnect each other. So it's a very complex infographics uh, that behind have a long report and a long Excel with a database of the local uh, um, food policy initiative initiatives. And after doing uh, uh, those inventory, we move all uh, those uh, issues uh, to a public engagement process uh, in which uh, we organize debate, public debate uh, on uh, the results of the report, on the results of the inventory with all uh, the different uh, actors uh, of our city, from universities uh, to other public administration, to the regional authority, uh, to the city council itself, uh, um, to the civil society organization, with startups, with private sector, and so on. So after six months of public debate, uh, to have a deep dive on, uh, on everything concerning uh, all the different ideas uh, that starting from the, from the report, from the research of our local food system, we enrich our knowledge of what the city was doing also outside the municipality efforts. So starting from the municipality, but as well to engage all the different stakeholders that are active in uh, the local food system. And after this, uh, we define five priorities. So the city council was uh, engaged in, uh, in uh, the process of uh, decision making. So through, again, through the report, we study our food system. Through the public engagement, we enlarge our knowledge. And finally, our city council define in its uh, capacity uh, the priorities that are five. Uh, everything uh, well uh, inter intertwined. So the first one is allow guarantee access to healthy food to all the citizens in Milan. The second is promote sustainable local food production. The third one is promote good food education. The fourth uh, is fight against food waste. And the finally, the fifth is about uh, promote and sustain research on local food system. So again, access to food, local production, education, waste and research. And everything regarding these five uh, priority set uh, a new set uh, um, a new consensus on the broader actors that participate in this debate. Again, citizens, local actors, and finally the city council. So the mayor in his capacity. All of our priority are then uh, um, deep uh, described uh, in our local food policy. So in each 
of the priority, there are a set of guidelines, a set of actions, uh, and so on and so forth. But the more important uh, legacy that the, the process of defining a local food policy uh, organized uh, was uh, exactly define the local consensus internal and external so internal of a different uh, municipal department and external with all the different actors that are active on the local food system and again this is very very important because uh, in this way the municipality declare to all around the local actors and then also inside the community of a million pact worldwide that we want to define goal we want to define results in our local food system and i think this is the more important element to having a food policy as Cecilia mentioned daca was doing the same last year and so daca de declared very interesting on working on food policies in which way you need to to read the food policy you need to read the, the food strategy and again this is very 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 important otherwise we are doing different projects different actions different public uh, public services food related but without without an holistic platform an holistic uh, view on our local food system so this is very very important now uh, let me uh, let me guide you in a deep dive on one of our main element of our local food policy that is promoting healthy diets uh, we start on this uh, effort by working uh, to try to apply at local level all the different uh, guidelines uh, effort also of uh, national uh, actors so the government the, the national ministries the regional ministers as 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 well uh, the metropolitan one so we are trying to work at local level but uh, having an overview also on a national uh, and a supra local level and so we starting co-defining together um, an atlas of the milan diabetes uh, trends and so starting from 2017 uh, having a, a, a pit stop in 2025 and finally see what the different trends can define at 2045 uh, so we started from uh, as you can see two different scenarios one uh, the first scenario is uh, no action, so uh, let's mark it work, so not doing nothing in a certain way. Uh, and the second one is to try to work uh, to uh, a reduction, a decreasement of, uh, of a rate of 25% of obesity by 2045. And here you can see the different impact from one side, from the people affected by non-communicable diseases and diabetes. And on the other hand, the cost for health sector. So you can see how the costs are increasing, are increasing if we do no action, and you can see how cost is increasing if we are do some actions. And uh, again, this. Uh, uh, scenarios, this atlas was made by our regional and metropolitan authority of public health, and we contribute uh, in a little bit, but. Uh, was a uh, was very important work with the other multi-level uh, institution and as well working with them so with a regional authority with a national health ministry uh, we 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 go through the different uh, percentage of obesity in adults and in child and with our target and uh, our contribution at local level is very important because uh, we have uh, a very important driver of change uh, that is our school canteen system that is a well-developed uh, framework uh, to a uh, school feeding program in Milan uh, and uh, our main effort of our local food policy in this specific field of action is to transform our menu towards a more healthy, healthy diets. And uh, for doing this, again, uh, we work to see and to understand the different uh, um, multi the different effort of the different institutions. Here in the graphs, you can see at, at local level, 
uh, our school canteen systems, but as well you can see at the metropolitan, regional, national and as well international the different legislation that allowing us, that are guiding us to develop good diets, healthy diets in our menu of the school canteens. And then we come back at the end at the same, at the same uh, image. So which is our main driver? As mentioned, this uh, school feeding program that in, Milan, that in Milan is managed by a municipal agency for school canteens is an in-house company, so full control by our municipality, by our food policy department. Um, in the canteens, uh, there are, uh, in the city, there are more than 600 of canteens uh, in which the food is served and is prepared into 26 internal cooking centers, 26 cooking centers, neighborhood cooking centers, central kitchen in certain way, plus 81 internal kitchen of the kindergartens. Each year we serve about 17 um, million of meals per year and 85,000 meals per day. So it's an important driver of change that allowing us uh, to transform the diets and uh, the habits, uh, that is our goal, uh, of our kids in Milan. The different blue dots are the canteens and the red cross are the cooking center. This is our menu. Uh, so is uh, exactly the menu that all the parents in Milan have uh, uh, put on their fridge is like a, a, a tips uh, to our that we share sometimes. So it's a menu in which uh, is a seasonal menu, one per winter and one per summer. Uh, and it's co-designed with all the different actors that are part of our food policy. So the municipal agency uh, itself, our group of parents. We have about 2000 of uh, parents that are supporting us in doing control, check and control inside uh, the daily service and uh, together with the health authority of our regional uh, institution, regional authority. And uh, each six months uh, we, we change the menu and uh, by introducing a new recipes or avoiding one, we are perceiving our food policy goal to moving towards a more healthy uh, school canteens system, a more healthy food system. And uh, what we are doing uh, inside uh, the school canteens? First of all, by trying to promote uh, very good uh, uh, health uh, habits. So with a program that is named Morning Break with Fruits, uh, we are entering uh, in a voluntary action uh, in about uh, the 50% of the primary schools. And uh, after year, so we started in 2017 uh, this program, and year by year we are uh, seeing more good uh, um, performance indicators. So by asking uh, the results to the different uh, uh, shareholders. So first of all, asking to parents. 87% of parents appreciate this program. 80% um, of teachers uh, think that the children can increase uh, their free consumption. And finally, ask it directly to the, to the kids, uh, ask directly to the children. We are seeing, there are some issues inside the graphs, but we are seeing that uh, since 2019 to this year, we are seeing plus 5% of fruits uh, appreciation. So you know that uh, fruits is uh, complicated uh, to, to, to change in our habits, uh, but starting from children, since the kindergarten to the secondary school, we can transform the habits of our uh, children. And again, together with uh, uh, applying the ministry guidelines and the WHO guidelines on healthy diets, uh, we are shifting towards a more plant-based uh, uh, diets, a more plant-based menu, by increasing the, the, the percentage of tubers, uh, legumes and uh, uh, white meat, uh, we are achieving as well some uh, very good uh, environmental uh, um, impact of our procurement of the school canteens. The more important element that we have done when we do uh, intervention in a uh, menu of uh, school canteens are also to assess uh, their impact inside the appreciation 
overheats. Otherwise, uh, we can have a very high standard and very uh, well uh, theoretic theoretically uh, menu, but uh, without uh, the children appreciation. So each year we ask directly from children uh, the positive and the negative uh, perception of everything uh, are entering in their table, everything are entering in their plate. And uh, another one that we introduced uh, since the beginning of a food policy is uh, another guidelines of uh, the National Health uh, um, Guidance for School Canteens that is try to reduce uh, or in some case ban the added salts from kindergartens. Uh, now are still active and uh, this is another important element that are guiding us to achieve the goals that we are set on healthy diets. Again, coming back on the topic of uh, multi-level governance. With this presentation, I go, uh, I, I present you a deep dive on uh, one specific action that is try to uh, change our the menu of our school canteens. But there are also other elements that we are doing on this again that are connecting to other national and regional legislation. One is work on local food procurement. We have a legislative decree in Italy that allowing us to do direct tender, direct contract with a local uh, agriculture, with urban and peri-urban agriculture. And this is very, very important because allowing us to connect to another um, food policy priority that is promotion of a local food production. Another one that is uh, connected to an European um, legislation on uh, allowing to each kids in our uh, in our cities uh, at least uh, one healthy healthy um, menu per day, um, one healthy lunch per day, and so through the school canteens we are able to do this. Another one uh, is uh, the Green Public Procurement Code that set uh, some uh, ambitious target uh, to organic production um, and uh, we are applying uh, at local level uh, this kind of approach. So is, so is another way in which uh, uh, you can see your impact in your local food system defining uh, a broader food policy that declare your political consensus, implement a concrete action because we as municipality, we are very pragmatic, very concrete to de define uh, local impactful actions, but having the approach to see the interconnection, as Cecilia mentioned, also to other, to other uh, effort and to other field of action of our local food system. So my, my presentation is uh, concluded. Uh, now I leave the floor to Filippo or to Pompron to see another case from Asia Pacific. Thanks for your attention and again, happy food day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea, um, also for providing insightful examples on uh, of um, urban uh, Food strategy with uh, an example on um, um, healthy meals provided by the municipality uh, with a multi level approach because you you mentioned us that uh, you uh, you take into consideration the the WHO the World Health Organization guidelines the European also the European Union guidelines and also the regional and the metropolitan one uh, in order to be consistent let's say with this uh, um, multi multi level guidelines and um, so through 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 this example you 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 give i think uh, uh, some 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 very nice insight to uh, the cities that wants to develop a new food strategy so if you um, from the public if you have some questions you can start writing them in the chat there will be the time for the q and a after the presentation of the of the next speaker. It's my pleasure now to um, introduce um, Mr. Pornprom Vicky Sret, advisor to the Governor of Bangkok on Environmental Affairs. Uh, he, well, we we have working, we have been working together very closely in the last two years, and we will meet. I will meet you again very soon in uh, in Brussels in a week. So, without further ado. Um,
Mr. Porpon, the floor is uh, is yours. Thank you very much, Filippo. Hello, everybody. Good good afternoon for those who are in this part of the world, and good morning to those of you in Europe or elsewhere. So uh, I trust that my presentation is with with you, right? Okay. So just to introduce myself, my name is Pon Prom Vikasrath. I'm the advisor to the governor of Bangkok. And uh, in, in terms of the work that we have done with Milan, uh, I've been appointed to be part of the committee uh, that, that, that is uh, set out to do the uh, food policy in, in Bangkok. And through this uh, committee, I've had the chance to work closely with uh, uh, many of the colleagues from Milan. So today I'll just go through uh, some uh, background and then the the plan that we are uh, currently uh, have finished drafting and in in process of getting the approval from the governor of Bangkok himself. And once approval, then we will have some launch events in November, which I know that Filippo and colleagues will be joining us in Bangkok as well. So this is just from the uh, trip that we, the picture in the first uh, page is from our visit to um, Milan. Uh, so here uh, I've done some uh, journey just to illustrate. So where we started and uh, where we are currently. So we started in uh, October, sorry, 4th of August, 2021. So that was actually before the current governor, Mr. Chachad, came into office. So the BM, BMA uh, Bangkok Metropolitan Administration signed a uh, signatory of Milan Urban Food Policy Pact or MUFPP and you know with the objective to share knowledge uh, not only to uh, learn from Milan but to to show uh, others you know what the, the what is being conducted in in the city of, of Bangkok as well. And uh, following on from that we uh, so in, in, in November, we, we started to, sorry, in, in 8th to 11th of August 2022, we had the pleasure to, to um, welcome uh, colleagues from Milan to, to come to, to Bangkok, where we uh, had uh, meetings and also uh, uh, took the Milan colleagues to see, um, you know, our agriculture uh, practices and also um, to meet with many of our stakeholders, you know, those working in food surplus uh, enterprises, those working in uh, food waste and urban agriculture. So we uh, were able to um, invite many of our stakeholders to meet with the Milan colleagues during that visit uh, late last year. And following that visit in November, we formed a food policy working group establishment. And under that, we implemented uh, two sandbox or pilot projects in uh, two of our districts. So Hui Kuang district and Sampan Tuong district. Uh, so we um, chose these two because symbolically, Sampan Tuong district is uh, our traditional Chinatown. So, you know, a lot of uh, Ch Chinese um, uh, citizens and uh, Thai Chinese and also uh, lots of businesses and restaurants. And Hui Kuang district is what we call a new Chinatown due to, you know, the being near to the Chinese embassy and a lot of uh, Chinese uh, uh, tourists, uh, immigrants have moved to Bangkok and have settled in the Hoi Kuang district. So also, so we just thought it would be a nice uh, symbolic gesture to to have these two. Uh, where we, where I will share with you some of the projects and successes that were done under the uh, sandbox model. And then moving along to uh, 2023, uh, and, and then uh, we were, sorry, able to to go to um, Milan in uh, in in late May 2023, where we learned a lot. We went to see the school canteens that uh, Andrea uh, mentioned, and also went to see uh, the food bank, or I think you call it the food waste center, to see the how you're able to integrate 
people from the lower income communities into uh, receiving food surplus and also helping them with the career development, etc. And once we came back from Milan, we we uh, started to to draft our food policy, you know, um, and we and we and we uh, separated into seven different categories, which I'll go go into details. So we're in currently in, in, in the process of this being done and then now seeking approval from the governor, as I mentioned, and we will have a launch and implementation starting in November 2023. OK, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So I think we just have a, a vision for our food. Uh, Bangkok food policy. So we believe that Bangkok is a city of food, which we are people from around the world travel to Bangkok, you know, to enjoy, you know, a street food, uh, our Thai food, Pad Thai, green curry, you, you name it. But we don't want to just to be the city of food, but we want to be a city of food with equity, uh, where people can of all uh, income levels, everything can, can have access, uh, quality, uh, clean and safe, and sustainability in terms of from the process of being produced and from the process of uh, to the process of being, you know, disposed, uh, done uh, in a sustainable manner and for all, which uh, suits with uh, um, the governor's uh, key motto, which is he wants Bangkok to be a livable city for all. So, so we added on the last part as well. Okay, next please. So this is to elaborate on, on the, the vision so, you know, equity focusing on, you know, vulnerable groups through projects such as, you know, food banks, uh, quality uh, through the projects of, you know, uh, food safety certification system and, you know, um, the uh, in, in terms of um, the, the, the sanitation part and sustainability, you know, the production we want, we are promoting, you know, a gap of good agricultural practices in our uh, 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 with the, to the farmers that are located in, in, in Bangkok. And also we have a, a strong food waste uh, management policy that, that is, you know, has been pushed strongly by, by the governor him, himself. Yes, next please. So this is uh, just something we, we mapped uh, according to, you know, the sustainable development goals. Uh, you know, just to uh, start from the left-hand side, you know, food production, food distribution, food establishment, uh, food center and, and food discount, uh, food waste management, food education, and, and uh, Thai school lunch program. All of these I will go into further details. And at the heart of it all is uh, good governance. And the heart of the heart is the food strategy. And also we focus a lot on communication, uh, public relations part, and also uh, open data through the, the one map, which I also uh, will We'll go into further details as well. Okay, next, please. So on the food production side, so we aim to increase uh, the amount of uh, organic agricultural areas. So Bangkok, we we are not a strong, you know, uh, agricultural city. We only have a uh, nineteen thousand hectares. So most of it is uh, developed. For, you know, not. We only have a few districts that are left for you know agricultural purposes, but the rest that remains we want to promote them being organic as much as possible in order to achieve the sustainability sustainability part, but also to encourage uh, local farmers to go into a more premium organic market, which is now becoming more and more uh, prevalent in in Bangkok, where people are starting to feel um, concerned more on their health. Uh, issues. So we we have a, a goal to promote uh, those that that you know um, uh, to, to to align with the the gap uh, uh, thing by by uh, uh, 400 areas within uh, 2027. So 100 areas. Areas is in terms of you know agri uh, far farmers. Next please. So we also have a. Uh, a policy under the governor's is uh, to do um, a farmers market. So we we try to cut the the middleman, who you know sometimes may you know cut the price or anything to to bypass them at all and use uh, many of the public spaces such as our public parks and you know sports centers 
act where there are uh, already natural traffic and encourage local farmers to come and, and sell uh, their, their products in, in these areas. We do it every Saturday and Sunday mornings and we switch around the different parks uh, every every weekend. And we also try to promote organic farmers to, to come and sell their products here as well. So there's getting a lot of interest and in the morning where people are there to exercise and spend time with their family, they can also support our local farmers as well. Next, please. So in terms of food distribution, so this is uh, more of a getting sanitation criteria right for uh, the, the distributors, so markets, supermarkets, convenience stores and other sort of um, distribution points. For, for markets, we also have a, a governor's project called a premium market where we have a very strict and stringent guidelines done by the sanitation department and whichever uh, markets can can meet these guidelines are uh, given labels and you know getting preference preferential treatment by the the sanitation de department and you know a lot of the markets now now joined uh, this 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 project and and you know is helping to build up the sustainability trend a lot and also we have uh, 11 markets under direct control of uh, the BMA uh, so we focus on the 11 that we we can 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 really uh, put our policy down and trying to make uh, you know health sanitation uh, uh, cleanliness and also sustainability as as key for for these 11 markets and also you know uh, to have a goal to increase distribution points for gap products made in in bangkok also called bangkok green covering all of the 50 districts by uh, the year 2027 next please and this also uh, on the safety uh, standards, but now focusing more on the restaurant side. So we have a, a, a clear goal to make sure that 100% of all restaurants are, uh, are being checked by the sanitation department and also the district offices uh, in, in charge. And today we already meet the goal of 100%, but we, we are we, we're just setting the goal just to, to ensure that it's an entrench in the Bangkok food plan. And um, yes, and also the restaurants, we try to encourage them uh, to to be able to to uh, engage more with the, the gap agricultural product. So not only supporting gap on the upstream side, which is the farmers, but also supporting on the downstream side, which is the, the vendors as well. Yes, next, please. So this is just some pictures from the uh, sanitation department going into doing that. Uh, Checkups on the restaurants. Yep. Next, please. So next is uh, want to talk about the the food bank center. It's also something that we saw uh, in in Milan, and you know, very impressed. And that the governor is very keen on 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 this idea, and he has told the Hoi Khoang district, who the the director went to Milan with us to to. To, to just do it and, and make it a, a pilot project, which uh, according to the Hoi Khoang district, they've already uh, given out uh, the food in terms of like events so 33 times already and have given out uh, 990 kilogram worth of surplus food to to more than you know, many hundreds of, that, uh, of, of people uh, of um, lower income. And um, we aim to increase from just one food bank center into six within this year, and then we'll multiply and to reach 24 uh, food bank centers within 2027. And this is not the only model that we're trying to do the food bank. This is encouraging people to come to the food bank, but also we have food bank uh, delivery as well, where we, we work with um, uh, a delivery app to to uh, come and pick up the surplus food from the district offices and deliver to you know uh, targeted households, for example, those uh, of old age who are unable to to leave their homes. 
and also not only uh, looking to expand our goals, not only to expand the food bank center, but expand the number of stakeholders who are participating with us. So a goal is to have 50 networks uh, in each district within uh, 2027. So for example, temples, uh, markets, supermarkets, uh, Etc. can be counted as network. So Thailand, we are a Buddhist country, and you know, with uh, a lot of people donate to the temples. Sometimes donate too many or too much products, too much food, too much stuff, and some and and you know the 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 monks at the temples also work with us to to see that they 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 give out some of the products that they have too too much to to us, so we can. Um, distribute to the lower income community as well. So we work a lot with the network of, of temples in Bangkok. Next, please. So this is a picture. We're working with a foundation, communities, temples, and you can see the uh, bottom right picture. Uh, the guy wearing the green jacket is a, a line man. It's an application that Thai people use for food delivery. So part of the CSR program, line man has offered, you know, some of the uh, delivery um, uh, personnel to to help us distribute uh, food surplus to, you know, um, targeted communities. So yeah. next, please. And lastly, uh, it's on uh, food waste management. So uh, we have a, the governor's uh, project called No Mix Waste. So he he wants to uh, ensure that the to the public that if you separate the waste, garbage trucks in owned by the BMA will not mix the waste together again. So we focus it on um, uh, source separated collection. So we we focusing on identifying where the sources. Uh, of the waste are and who is helping us in segregating their waste. For example, if uh, offices, if supermarkets, markets are separating the, the food waste, we will have a separate vehicles to go and collect the food waste and then we'll give it to uh, farmers to turn into um, uh, animal feedstock or turn it into uh, compost at our various compost facilities. Uh, around town. So we have a long term goal to separate 100 ton of food waste per day by 2027. And we have a short term goal in 2023 of uh, separating 200 tons a day. Currently, we are at 90 ton a day, which is uh, on, on good uh, progress towards achieving this short term goal. And um, also, not only looking at the quantity of the waste, but again, the number of stakeholders who will join. Uh, we, we, we look to make sure that all the big uh, hubs or big uh, waste producers, for example, buildings, markets, etc., join our network of waste separators where we can have uh, separate collection trucks to pick up. Uh, next, please. Yeah, so uh, if, if if you can see um, top right picture is in a, a market, a fresh market in uh, Tonbury side where we know that they separate a lot of, you know, um, uh, vegetable waste and then we can uh, get our separate uh, collection truck to, to collect and then go straight to compost um, uh, facilities. But others like the, the bottom two is uh, collected not only from markets, but from uh, households as well. Yeah. Next, please. And here is a very interesting project that we are working with one of our franchise uh, convenience store uh, uh, company, uh, uh, Lotus, used to be part of uh, Tesco Lotus. Um, so uh, when they have surplus food in their small branches located around the city, uh, every morning, our uh, our workers, the uh, garbage collectors or the street sweepers, can go into their or any of their branches and collect surplus food. So you know, um, get uh, surplus food, bread, uh, uh, fruits, drinks, and you know, it's just a motivation for these uh, workers who are doing very tough job and is other regarded to be the unsung hero of the city 
who 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 uh, and and you know they they get um free surplus food from from this. So it's a uh, a very good initiative that we are working with the uh, uh, Lotus convenience store. Yeah. Next please. And they have around 500 uh, branches around the city. Uh, then we also have a, a food uh, education part of the school system. Uh, so Thai school lunch system is where we calculate the calories and then uh, in transparency model to tell the uh, uh, parents and the, uh, the kids on what type of uh, food they're eating, how much calories and the ingredients, etc. So, so we aim to increase this system uh, to 100 percent. And also uh, Andrea mentioned about the school canteen. So we are uh, launching a, a study in, in the um, Department of Education to to whether see if this is a model should be taken in the future for 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 Bangkok. So the the 2023 goal will be to to launch a, a study first. Yeah, uh, next please. And also um, we also have salad bar in we have we have 437 schools in Bangkok and twice a week uh, is the governor's policy to have a salad bar for for the kids and you know we also keep data on what kind of salad that that uh, the kids are is popular amongst the students etc so this is a again a, a good quick win policy that already have been launched next please yes and, and good governance we will report the results uh, two times a year we'll have a food prep preparedness plan in crisis situation, have a food expo, and also in terms of a communication side, we uh, look look to, to, to focus on this as well. Next, please. And, you know, we take a lot of, uh, we prioritize in um, uh, putting everything on the map in terms of open data so everyone can see. For example, we, can, we will show the livestock area in Bangkok agricultural area uh, where you can find the food surplus, uh, where are the main sources of food waste, etc., and restaurants and, and the, the uh, establishment that have passed the food safety standard. So we have a one map system under the, 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 the governance policy already, and we will integrate all this information as part of the back of food plan into this one map as well. Next, please. This is just to show this is a, a map. This only I only took, selected the filter of low income communities in Bangkok, and you can see in those uh, rectangles that these this is and then we can also have many filters, etc., to be added on to this um, uh, one map that is being developed by our urban planning department. Uh, next, please. Uh, yeah, so we have a quick win, which I already started and will continue as, the, as pretty much what, what I just explained earlier. Next, please. Yeah, and the two sandbox. Next, please. And these are just some results from the six months in 2000 in this year from March to August that we did, you know, so we did uh, uh, food establishment, then inspection, uh, food surplus that we are able to uh, distribute uh, 3,500 kilograms, etc. You know, food waste, uh, more than ne nearly 2,200 uh, tons of uh, food waste that have been. Uh, this is only in two of the 50 districts, but now this is, uh, we will uh, already expand it to the rest of the 50 dis districts. Yeah. Okay, next, please. Okay, I think so. So this is just, uh, uh, just uh, so the journey. So we started from looking at it in theory. We went to see the site visit in Milan. We also uh, uh, did some pilot projects just to show that it works on a small scale and are able to expand. And then once we did that, we are able to break down into different groups and then launch uh, a, a committee to to do the Bangkok food plan. And after that. Uh, getting approval from the governor and now we're set for you know uh, getting approval and forward to the implementation part so this is uh just wanted to share with you so thank you very much for for listening thank you thank you
Okay, Kopkun Kap Kun Bonprom. It was a very insightful presentation and uh, uh, also, you you gave a very tangible uh, examples on how by using um, by adopting a food strategy, uh, you can have an impact on the different uh, on the on different field of the food system, also in the different categories of the Milan Pact, and also. We have noticed that uh, in uh, in your uh, uh, in your strategy there are clear uh, target to be to be rich, which 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 is also very important. And finally, uh, my my last remark is that uh, mm, we we are talking about uh, uh, multi level governance, and this was an example of how you have been able to involve. Uh, the district of your city in the food strategy. Uh, so it's of course it's it's another layer of the multi-level governance. With Andrea, we spoke about the European Commission, the WHO, the regional level, and you also mentioned the the district level. Of course, uh, we are very very looking forward to to joining you for this very important moment uh, in November, which will be the launch of the of the of the new strategy. So. Um, it's uh, now the time for questions to the speaker. Uh, while you are um, preparing your um, your questions, uh, I can ask you to turn on your camera for the family picture. So if you, if every one of you can turn on your camera. Okay, perfect. I see many friends from Asia Pacific. That's very nice. OK. So. Three to one. Three to one, there are some pages in Teams. Again, three to one. OK. Thank you so much. So um, before moving to the questions part, I would like would like just to remind you uh, about uh, the next uh, webinars. I will share the screen for one second. OK, so we today we talk about uh, uh, the um, multi-level uh, governance. Next time on the 6th of November, we will talk about uh, the quadruple helix of innovation. So we will uh, then talk about the involvement of the stakeholder of the food system. And we will also uh, use the framework of Food Trails, uh, which is a European funded project led by the city of Milan. So we will uh, present you a Canva to develop a multi the multi stakeholder approach. This webinar will take place uh, in on the 6th of, um, of November. And uh, from 3 to 4.30, you can see in the QR code, the, you can find uh, there the link to register. And in the next webinar, we will have representative of the city of uh, Seberan Perai uh, presenting what they have been doing in the multi-stakeholder multi involvement, plus the colleagues of the city of Milan um, from Food Trace and the colleagues from uh, um, Parayangan Catholic University that will talk about uh, quadruple helix of innovation. So th th that will be the next, uh, let's say, the, the next uh, uh, part. It's the stakeholder involvement, and then we will continue with promoting healthy diets for the people and the planet on the 20th of November and implementing food uh, taxation to promote healthy diets. So let me uh, now move to the questions. Maybe the, there are some questions from the in the chat. Let me see. <clears throat> and also, I see also some hand raised. Please, if you have question, just uh, if you have your hand raised, I see. Ah, uh, Din Gin, Din Anjar. Si la campa? Yeah, thank you, uh, Filippo. May I ask to each uh, speaker, uh, Filippo? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you, Sajah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first for uh, Cecilia, uh, besides expanding uh, dialogue and resource location between national and local government, 
according to your knowledge and experience, uh, what are the possible levels of chain for establishing or strengthening collaboration between nation and local government around food system? And uh, second uh, question, uh, city of Bandung, uh, how to soon have a plan for uh, sustainable uh, city food uh, development. Uh, so what do uh, do we have to prepare and what initial step must be uh, taken? Yeah. And for my friend Andrea, <laughs> So, how does the city of Milan uh, guarantee access to healthy food? And what does the key factor that other city can prepare uh, can prepare uh, and adapt to do so? Yeah, and so the last for an uh, one from sorry, yeah. Uh, would you like to let us uh, know the role of local government of Bangkok on collaborating many stakeholders around city food uh, system? Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank uh, Let's start with maybe with um, Cecilia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jinjina. Thank you, colleagues. I mean, for the, the wonderful presentation. Congratulations to Bangkok for the work done so far. Um, so, yes, what are the, 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 the possible, uh, the, uh, what could be done in terms of multi, to strengthen this, this multi level governance? And of course, as we all mentioned, I mean, uh, uh, Andrea Magarini from Milan and the colleague from Bangkok. So the, this uh, uh, consultation, this building contents, consensus among stakeholders internally in the municipality, but also with external partners is fundamental. That is the first important step to build ownership. The, at the local level and also uh, the connection with the national government. But I have to say that in most of the context, uh, uh, this uh, enabling uh, environment, uh, which exists in Milan, for instance, uh, this uh, connection between the national policy and uh, uh, the different level of government is not uh, uh, what we find in most of uh, of the of the countries, particularly, I mean, in 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 developed in low and middle income countries. So, what to do in that case? How cities are doing? So, and I want to mention something that is working uh, quite uh, um, in in some context, which is the establishment of network uh, of food system network at national level. Cities uh, joining forces uh, in a national context uh, for uh, strengthening this agenda of food system transformation and to push the national government to work together on this agenda. This is uh, uh, something, I mean, that is happening, for instance, in Kenya, in Africa, where uh, there is a gap, a real gap between the policy environment and what cities are doing. Many cities are developing food strategy, institutionalized, but not adequately supported from national policy environment. So what to do in that cases? So we need, uh, so bring, uh, having uh, cities together, having uh, different subnational government together, joining forces, uh, creating network, uh, and agree on how to engage uh, the national government could be a way to go. So there are, in some cases, there are already association of municipality that could be uh, uh, association of mayors, association of local of national government that could be included in, in this agenda of uh, food system transformation and developing food strategy. So, but if uh, 100 cities adopt food strategy in a country, it will be more easy to get the national government on board. 
And that is, and and then I mean, we are not talking just to to, to big cities. Small and intermediary cities exist, which which need Bangkok, for instance, as a driving force for uh, pushing their agenda forward. So the big cities, the capital cities, could be a driver for change, even for other cities in the same country. That. Thank you, thank you, Cecilia. Uh, now, Andrea. Yeah, so thank you, my friend Ingin, for the question. Uh, I think that uh, working to 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 guarantee to allow healthy diets use can be one of the main driver of all of our food policy. So, uh, and as Cecilia mentioned, we need to understand our local. Uh, uh, local commitment, uh, local action, pre-existing one. So depending from our uh, food related public services that we have in our cities, who have uh, the school canteens, uh, who have uh, food aid system, uh, who have uh, open street markets. So depending from our local recipes in certain way and uh, to reinforce all of these solutions in our cities to see what are present and what aren't present and to try to scaling up internally in our in our cities and to try to have some uh, to set some uh, food safety standards uh, in order to see that uh, the different quality of the food that we are sharing are on the same page. And uh, I think that in the developing of this series of webinar with the ASEAN and uh, exactly <laughs> we the health cluster of the ASEAN, we can discover more in our uh, in our cities. And just to 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 following on the pathways that also Cecilia uh, taking the answer, uh, have some example in Asia Pacific countries. I think that can be exactly what uh, we think can supporting all of us and all of you in the region. So here we are. We in the. I guess point of this webinar, we were in 81 uh, connecting and see that uh, um, Bangkok have a food strategy, uh, that uh, Seber Amperai have another food strategy, that Seoul have another food strategy, but now Bandung uh, declare that they are working on a food strategy, can have some inch point in the region to see if that is possible and all of us can doing. Uh, in the chat, Chiang Mai uh, declared that they are connecting to uh, connect data on the local effort. So starting from an inventory as Bangkok have done and working together with the other department as Bangkok uh, again has done is the perfect key point. And finally have the approval of a mayor in case of Bangkok the governor. So the, the I guess uh, uh, appointed political at local level can support uh, the definition of this kind of consensus. So working in this way, I think uh, that uh, can be achieved a lot of results. And in the following uh, series of a webinar, I think uh, that we can go further in uh, in diving all of this. Thank you, Andrea. Now it's time for uh, uh, Kun Bonbron to to react. So, I think I just want to to highlight and emphasize that um, actually the toughest part will how to work with the different departments. Think like for Bangkok, we have the tendency to work in silos. So the environmental department will just look at only uh, uh, waste, environmental side, and you know um, the social development side will only look at communities. So how do you work in in silo is uh, in 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 uh, collaboration? For example, uh, the food surplus or the food bank uh, policy. So it's like a uh, it's a project that actually have two key outputs. So you're actually helping to reduce food waste because the surplus food will will nevertheless become waste if you don't give it to low income communities, right? But also you're helping to support low income. So are you looking at from the environmental side reducing food waste or are you looking at from the social side to give away food to low income? So. If, if you're working in silos, neither of the departments will take responsibility because environment will say no, it's the responsibility of social department. Social will say no, it's food waste, so it's up to environment. So how do you bridge the two? So I think from our case, we have a, a com committee 
that oversee. And I think we have a strong political commitment in terms of the governor himself appointed me to help oversee. But we also, as a chair of the committee, we have the deputy permanent secretary uh, of BMAs who can help drive all the departments to work, not in silo, but, but together. Because food cut across so many, you know, the seven uh, criteria I told you about go through pretty much seven departments as well. Social development, agriculture is under the social development, there's health and sanitation for the food establishment, there's the education department for uh, Thai school lunch, there's the environmental department, and also the 50 district offices who are the implementing body. So this is very difficult uh, if the plan is not clear, you will not be able to translate to the the arms, the, the implementing body, which is the district offices. So first we have to have a strong committee with political uh, will that uh, would help through the do, do all the cross department work and also need to have a clear plan with clear output, clear percentage, clear goals so that once the uh, district office who are the implementers go and do the work, they they have they know what to do because maybe it works with the two districts who are doing the pilot, but the other 48, not sure what's going on. But if the, the plan is clear from the beginning, then definitely it will make the work for us much easier. So we we, we want to make the plan clear, have uh, clear goals for people to who can implement. Thank you, Kun Ponpro. Um, I see that Andrea is uh, writing in the chat to the question. So uh, we take the last question from Papius. I saw that uh, he raised his hand. Just very, uh, yeah. Very last question, please, Silakan Papius. Hello, Anda mendengar suara saya, Filippo? Do you hear me? Yeah, bisa, okay. bisa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. And I give the <clears throat> high appreciation for this webinar that we can discuss here from, uh, other, from other countries. So uh, just a very short uh, or brief uh, information that uh, in Bandung, now we are working for a policy of food. Yes, so we are working now. And now we are waiting for the next process that this, uh, the draft of uh, policy of food is engaging all the parties in Bandung or uh, actors. Yeah, for example, like the, the government, of course, from the various uh, department and of course from the non-government organizations from the university and i think also from business uh, uh, actors and i think it will be uh, approved by the head of the city the mayor and also from the uh, local par parliament but the question is uh, i think from for andrea so because of there are many actors in engaging and in developing the uh, food strategy so perhaps you have some or any kind of suggestion yeah how to start how to engage them how to integrate all of the uh, actors in order to have a similar concern uh, relating on the issue of food, yeah. Perhaps you have uh, some such suggestions. So I think this is very important for us because food is not only the issue of the department, for example, the department of uh, security and uh, agriculture that Pakin Kin lead for this uh, department. But I think it is also the issue, the issue on the. Uh, concern of all of the department in the city. So do you have any suggestion for this issue, uh, Andrea? And one more, uh, also concerning the budget, how to raise uh, the budget in order to support the, let's say, yeah, the program 
for example, functioning like the uh, school canteen, yeah, healthy school canteen. I think this this is also having the consequences concerning how to raise uh, budget in order to support the school to have to build the let's say the healthy uh, school canteen. Thank you very much. Yeah, so very interesting question. So regarding the budget, I asked to Serena to to copy in the chat the link of the policy brief of budgeting food policy that we have done with Euros, with uh, food trains. Uh, and in those uh, policy brief, you can see some example that we are exploiting in Milan to leverage uh, our budget. So starting from public private partnership, uh, engaging our pre existing budget on public services and trying to do uh, grant making. So through these three main tools, uh, we have leverage uh, a lot of budget and in the policy brief you can see some tips and some framework to do to do that uh, st again starting from our experience from zero to the food policy in 2015 up to now um, regarding the topic of stakeholder engagement and internal uh, actors engagement involvement that again is the key of developing a food policy uh, one of the tips is to try to move in tactically. So starting uh, to working uh, with uh, with a first uh, strong department with uh, a very clear commitment, uh, and in your case, uh, the, the, the department, the KPP, the department of uh, bagging in, uh, I think is the key. Um, uh, and trying to connect to those department other kind of relation with uh, other uh, uh, department. First of all, uh, if you need to engage partner, you need to establish also personal relation with your colleagues because otherwise uh, are just formal relation or uh, theoretically relation or documentary relation. But uh, we are person and we need to exploit our power of person. Uh, and so every kind of also informal meeting with them, um, doing uh, concrete uh, actions. So visit, doing field visit uh, uh, in your cities, doing together field visit in other cities. So what we see working with the Milan Pact is that all the time in which we do uh, technical study visit in other uh, city with different departments uh, all the time uh, with this department with those departments uh, are establishing strong relations so trying to move in tactically from topic of personal relation but as well uh, institutional relations and uh, try to uh, work together with the other actors which we are, you are involving uh, to be exactly on the same page so why i want to engage in you for doing what uh, in which time frame and if you do this for all of you so the, the pre-existing and the newcomers are exactly on the same page and if you are on the same page you can achieve your uh, goal so are very simple tips but uh, that we <laughs> implement daily uh, and we think that are very very efficient uh, if you do in a broader scale uh, and day by day try to engage other actors uh, in your uh, effort and this allowing you to share the co-responsibility so you you we are not doing uh, alone all the effort in milan we are shared our responsibility we are share our goal we are share our results and the communication of our results with all of the colleagues that are working with us Thanks, Papius, for the question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, just let me mention that all the presentation and the recording of the session will be shared via, um, uh, via email, along also with the link to register for the next webinar, the 6th of November. We will deep dive about uh, um, multi-stakeholder involvement in the, in the food strategy. And... Um, uh, let me also thank all the participants, the speaker, Cecilia Andrea Pornbrom, the MFP Secretariat, Serena, the ASEAN Health Sector, uh, Bulina, and the ASEAN Health Secretariat through the Health Division for having co-organized this uh, webinar. Uh, if you are, we, we have seen that uh, um, the city of Bandung is uh, 
very interested together also with the city of Chiang Mai. They are signatory cities, so we will support them in this process as we did uh, with uh, the city of Bangkok. Uh, if your city wants to uh, assess and understand how to better uh, develop a food strategy, please uh, join us and sign the pact. Uh, you have in the chat uh, the our email address uh, if you want to know more on how to sign the pact, which is very easy and uh, no uh, fees are required to sign. We will then support you in uh, uh, develop your food strategy. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, and have uh, a very nice rest of, in, in, uh, of the rest of this uh, World Food Day that we have celebrated together. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye. Thank you very much, bye. Uh, thank bye, you. bye, bye, bye. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs>